Today, we put ourselves in the shoes of Cynthia Carroll. Imagine, you've become CEO of one of the world's largest mining companies, Anglo-American. $25 billion in sales, 162,000 employees, two-thirds of them in South Africa, and four months into your job, you hear the news, one of the miners in Rustenburg has lost his life. Yet another fatality. You have to decide, are you going to shut down the mine or continue business as usual? Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Vibor. I am an executive HL and leadership coach based in Toronto, Canada. And in this video, I will walk you through the thought process of an agile mindset. I'll give you a glimpse inside an agile CEO's mind and the steps that a CEO with an agile mindset will take while making a decision in an uncertain and complex environment. There are timestamps available in case you want to skip to a particular section. Let's get started. So before we solve this case study step by step, let's first find out how an agile mind actually works or more appropriately how an agile mind actually thinks for human beings in general the ability to make a decision depends upon the foundation of belief systems belief systems being the set of values that we use to validate our decisions for example the decisions made with an agile mindset are based on a clear understanding that one future cannot be predicted two it's natural for things situations and circumstances to show unexpected change and third, we simply cannot anticipate all relevant variables of a situation ahead of time. These beliefs guide our actions and because of these beliefs, the people with an agile mindset try to 1. Plan and strategize as they go. No upfront planning is required. 2. They experiment to learn and then adjust their thinking, planning and action based on that learning. 3. They make decisions quickly but still wait till the last responsible moment without waiting for all the information knowing that there are always ways to recover from mistakes. Fourth, they make things visible and transparent. And fifth, they create processes, structures, rules and systems that are highly adaptable and emergent in nature. That said, for simplicity, let's divide the thought process of an agile mind into three steps. Step one is sensing. Sensing what is happening in the current moment. A typical human being, well, all humans have five main senses, hearing, vision, smell, taste, and touch. An agile mind makes use of all the five senses to sense the situation at hand. In the example case study presented to the students in the clip we just saw, they hear the problem as told by Professor Sidal Neely. So if I am sitting among the students in this class, the first thing that I will do is sense, or in this case, hear or listen actively to the problem. I'll ask myself these questions. What am I hearing? What is standing out in what I'm hearing? And what is missing or unknown in what I'm hearing? Step number two is think. Based on the sensing or listening we just did, we then try to analyze the situation. And the tool we use to do this analysis is, well, thinking. I personally use a pen and a paper to think because it makes the whole process of thinking a little easy for me. As ageists, we are simple beings. Everything we need to navigate the uncertainty is right here. Okay, so we think and ask ourselves another set of powerful questions. First, what is this situation revealing about the organization and about me as a leader? What is the no-brainer in this situation? And what controls my next steps? Now, as we continue to sense and think through the situation with the help of the questions like these, we begin to formulate certain hypotheses. We then test these hypotheses with the help of experiments and these experiments will suggest a response the necessary actions that we will take as part of the final decision. The questions we ask ourselves at this point are What future do we want to create? What actions do we take? What outcomes do we want as a result of our actions? What experiments can we try to explore the unknown? And what is our expectation from those experiments? Let's go back to our case study. David, if you can open for us today. You're Cynthia Carroll. The news comes to you. Do you shut down the mine in Rustenburg? Yes or no? What are you going to do? So I think she needs to initiate very detailed investigations into what happened in these circumstances and then what has happened throughout the past 
Are you going to shut down or not shut down? <laughs> so I'm going to do a detailed investigation. <laughs> I do have a plan. What are you learning? What are you learning in this investigation? Practices that are not being followed correctly or out of line or could be safer where there's like issues. People are dying. It's not safe. Okay, so let's use our three-step thought process to make a decision. First is sense. And in this step, we make sure that we have heard the problem correctly by asking ourselves these questions. First, what am I hearing? I'm hearing that I am a CEO, $25 billion in revenue, 160,000 employees, and a miner who has lost his life. Next, what is standing out? Now, if I remove my judgmental mind and think objectively without any emotions or selfish motives attached, then what stands out is that a miner has lost his life while working in the mine. Next, what is unknown? In this case, we do not have any further information, so everything else is unknown, except that I am a CEO and that I have a decision to make. Step number two is think, and in this step, I analyze what I have just sensed. And I do that by asking myself these questions. First, what is this situation revealing about our organization and about me as a leader? It is revealing that there are safety issues, and as a company CEO, I am accountable. Next, what is the no-brainer? Should I shut down the mine? Absolutely. Unless we are ready to risk the lives of other miners, this is an absolute no-brainer. We should shut down the mine immediately, but only temporarily. Next question. What controls my next steps? Stakeholder analysis is so, so important when we think about change. So important to do. We think about who do we need to worry about and what do they care about? What are their interests? And so you start there, but that's not enough. You have to then say, where do I need to invest the most time? Who is in this cell? Depending upon the stakeholder analysis, let's say the most important stakeholders in my case are the shareholders. So my next steps will depend upon safeguarding the interests of my shareholders. Shareholders are looking for profit. So I need to get everything back to normal as soon as possible without causing a panic attack in the stock market. Okay, so the hypothesis I have created in my mind with the limited data available is that it is a safety issue and I need to resolve the issue ASAP without causing panic among the shareholders. Remember, simplicity is the key even when you are a CEO. Okay, based on the first two steps, sensing and thinking, the response I will make is to test the hypothesis by putting some experiments in place. I will hire professionals to investigate the safety issue. I will then put a time box on that investigation followed by communicating that time box to the shareholders, ensuring that shareholders are updated with the progress on a regular basis. I will then take steps to make this situation as transparent as possible by publishing it on the company page or via emails, making sure that shareholders have all the information they need to make an informed decision. If the issue is resolved at the end of the time box, we will open the mine. And if the issue is not resolved, we update the shareholders and keep running the time box experiments until we find a solution. So there you have it. These three steps, sense, think and respond, encapsulates the entire thought process of an agile mind that I use and which you can use as well to navigate uncertain and complex situations. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, then please do not forget to smash that like button. And also please do not forget to provide your valuable feedback in the comments. I'll see you in the next video.